OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network And welcome everyone and good morning. Thanks for coming out so early, 8.30. It seems early sometimes these days. Oh, there's Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Nice to see some familiar faces and names and welcome. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen so we can get started. All right, hopefully you can see the first slide of my presentation and hopefully you're in the right spot making Google app projects to help ESL students online to get acquainted. So I am Cindy Wislofsky and uh, I'm a retired teacher from San Diego Community College District an ESL instructor and ma mainly I taught beginning levels but also intermediate and a variety of other classes like the lab or pronunciation, et cetera. But now I'm an OTAN trainer, one of the many OTAN trainers. So I'm happy to be here at the conference. I'll be uh, sharing these slides with you towards the end. Um, so uh, maybe Patricia will remind me when I get the five minute warning. So here's what was going on, what I was hearing from my colleagues in that. Here was kind of a dilemma, building relationships and community remotely. Now that everyone went online, there seemed to be some challenges. Not that you don't have challenges in the face-to-face, -face, but for example, you know, trying to just teach your subject content while managing suddenly being online and just trying to focus the students, you know, getting them engaged to just participate feeling frustration, constantly trying new tools, what's gonna work, trying them out, don't work, learn something else, etc. And a feeling that, you know, the, the students aren't really getting to know each other. I mean, it, when we met face-to-face, -face, of course, we had more opportunities to do that, but it seemed to be an extra challenge uh, being online all the time. So for today, um, I wanted to give you four opportunities to try some get to know uh, activities and we'll be using Google Apps. We'll be go do doing a Google Doc, Google Slide Presentation, Google Photos, and then Google Jamboard. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but um, hopefully you'll get some new ideas. So we're gonna experience them synchronously. Um, they don't have to be that way, but I think that's kind of more exciting to have you know, things to develop live and then you can uh, work off some follow-up activities after that. Uh, so that's the idea. We're gonna gather some information together onto a single uh, document or slideshow or a photo album. And then you're going to um, have, you know, make some follow up activities that your students could do with that information. Um, and we'd also like to share ideas because all of you have great ideas as well. So there'll be an opportunities for that. Hopefully, you'll improve a little know how with Google if you're not familiar with all those apps and how I will share them. And you might, you know, think about how they might work in, in your situation or something similar. So like I said, we're gonna go live four times to collaborate on some projects. So I'm gonna demonstrate them first and then I'll put the link in the chat so that you can go to that uh, site and participate. After each of the demos, We'd like to get your feedback either in the chat or a reaction. And then we'll, you know, we'll all be sharing about um, ideas for projects and follow-up activities 
etc. So hopefully you're familiar with user reactions in Zoom, but if you're not, make sure you find the reaction button at the toolbar at the bottom and choose one if you wanted to do that. And don't forget that the top row and those, you know, time out after a while, but the middle and the bottom row, you have to deselect those to remove them from your screen, just an FYI. So for the first two activities, in order to participate, I'm gonna have you go to a little Google form because you need to have a number in order to participate. So all we're gonna do is ask you to put your name. Um, let me show you what the form looks like. Can you see the form? Yes. Yes, okay, great. So uh, all you're gonna do is type your first name and last initial. And um, whoops, sorry. And then we'll get a little um, form developed so that you can, oops. you can participate. So let me put that in the chat right now. Okay, I can see that 19 people have responded. So can you see my screen now? Um, so yes. if you see your name like Jody B is number two. Uh, so if you look at the list, find your name. And Cindy, you know, Ruth is asking if it's something if, if this is something you do with students also before participation. Um, if you know if you know your students, you can uh, pre number them on the form. Um, but if you don't know your students and you're not sure how many are going to participate, yes, this is a good way to do it. If you're face to face, I used to give out numbers, you know, randomly to students so that they knew their number. But this is one way to do it remotely. So Alicia, I see you, you're on here twice. So you can pick 19 or 20. All right. Yes, that was an accident. OK. OK. All right. <laughs> no problem. That was All right. So it looks like we have 21 people that would like to participate. And jot down your number. We'll be using it for two activities. OK. So I, one thing you have to do with this is refresh if uh, you know you think more people are adding to it. So it's good to refresh once in a while. Okay, so we're gonna stop with that. All right, so this is the form we're gonna use for uh, our purposes. It would be different with students, but let's get to know each other. So basically, you know, you're just going to type your name. Now, um, the form that you filled out, it automatically starts numbering with number two. So you as the teacher can, um, you know, give your example on line number one. It's always good to give a model. So I'm representing ESL. What's the best thing about your agency? I would say my Fabulous colleagues, since I'm not working with students right now. All right, can everybody see where I entered? Maybe Patricia, can you give me a heads up? Yes, sorry, can't see. Okay, perfect, sorry. <laughs> I'm calling on you. All right, and I see a thumbs up from Alicia, thank you. All right, so now I'm gonna share this uh, in the chat. So, Remember when you share, you go up to the top right, right? And just to review how you share a document or another Google one. Uh, if you know all your students' emails and you wanted to keep it private that way, that's one way you can copy and paste 
their names in there, but I usually just use the link. And when you want to use the link, I want people to be able to edit, of course, because they're going to add their information. So your other choices are just to view or comment, but I'm going to keep it on edit. I'm going to copy the link for you guys. Done. And then I'm going to share that in the chat again. So here's a new place for you to go to. And so please open it up and start typing on your line. And wow, we can see it happening live. That's so exciting. And the reason why you want to give out numbers is because if you don't, and the students don't know what line to type on, then they start typing on top of each other. So you want to avoid that by giving them a number or by pre-filling in their names, if you have that opportunity. Cindy, Carolyn's asking, how do you prevent students from altering the form? Um, I don't. Uh, I have never had that problem, although that's always been a concern of mine. Um, in Google, you can always go back to previous previous versions. So, um, you know, if how much are they going to alter it? Really, if they um, take away someone's information, you just have them input it again. Or if they mess up the header rows, I just would type them that in again. To me, it has not been a problem. But again, uh, you know, modeling a lot of times and maybe telling them, you know, what the expectations are and, and modeling exactly what they're going to do and only do that, for example. Okay, and so if I scroll down, you can see a lot of great information coming up. You notice when somebody's typing, it just says anonymous. Um, and that's because I just shared the link. I didn't share it through email. If you shared it through email, then you would see exactly who's typing. All right, so then from this, you know, we instantly have a lot of information. And so what are you gonna do with that information? Well, first of all, a typical thing with ESL students is, well, let's talk about it. And let's say, oh, well, look at, let's find Sharon. What number is Sharon? Oh, she's number three. Now, um, what city is she from, et cetera? And who's from Castro Valley? Oh, that's Ruth. And um, who thinks the best thing about their agency is collaboration? You know, that might be a few different people. So you can um, start to talk about um, the information that's there. You could ask specific questions. Oh, Vanessa, I see you're from Fausto. Now, where is that? And what agency do you work for there? You know things like that from the information we have here. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, I see uh, Marisol had a question. Why not use just this form and not assign numbers. They just take a number from this sheet. Uh, well, I, um, I want them to have a number first and be prepared to, so that when they open this up, they're immediately going to that, that line. If it's you know, not a huge group, you could say, you, know, you could go down your list of students and say, oh, Mark, you're number one today, and Alicia, you're number two. And you know, you could verbalize 
the numbers they're supposed to, to use as well. But this is just another way to do it. All right. So thank you all for your participation with that. And so let's go back to our slides. So this is, oh, we already did this. So we learned the basics about each other. When, and no, so what are you gonna do with this? So normally, um, we would do a follow-up activity. But before that, um, how was your experience doing that as a participant or a viewer? Some people just like to view. Uh, you can comment in the chat or give a reaction button. Cindy, Ruth is asking if this works if students are on a phone. Yes, remember, um, students can access the Google products on their phones. Um, in fact, they can even download the docs, the slides, um, the Google Photos and Jamboard, all the ones we're doing, they can actually download the apps on their phone, which makes it a little easier to, uh, to use. But yes, definitely it would work on the phone. Okay, so hopefully that was um, a quick little experience. Yeah, okay, thank you, Elizabeth, that's great. It is low key. And it's a very simple way to get them to, to learn about Google Docs. All right. So how, are you gonna make tables? Well, you know, an easy thing is just to make them, the teacher makes them based on, you know, the current topic. It could be um, life skill or grammar or vocabulary lessons that you're working on. It could be questions. It could just be statements like I use today. You could have them um, do a dictation from you and then they ask a partner and then they add their partner's information in the table. You can have, you know, depending on your level, the students could create them. Maybe they're in a breakout room and then they share them with another group or the whole class, et cetera. There's a lot of opportunities. Yes, Caitlin, you can uh, use it to determine their goals exactly. There are, you know, so many options. And a table is so easy to insert. And yes, Mary Soul, I see you um, mentioned about using the same number. Yeah, that's something that I used to do with my face-to-face -face students. Um, you know, they use the same number for say a week. The, the student population would change, but at least for a week, they would have the same number. Now here's an example of a project that I did with students. So here's some questions that you might ask them. And you can see that right away, you would have some information that you could ask questions orally. You know, oh, I see Melu has a dog. You know, tell us about your dog or show us a picture of your dog or, you know, something like that. Carmen, oh, you've got two birds. Tell us about your birds. What are their names? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so a lot of things you can do with that. And what I've done before with students, oops, Um, is that each student wrote about the next student on the table. So number one wrote about number two, number two wrote about number three, et cetera. And so here's an example. Uh, they did some writing and then they, you know, put it on a different Google doc and then we put them in a shared folder. So that's one way to do it. You can also get lots of ideas of 
areas that your students need reinforcement on. So it's very revealing um, in that respect as well. Um, now I'd like to um, have you guys do some annotation uh, in a little bit. So the way I'd like you to do is, um, you know, click the annotate button in the toolbar of Zoom and then uh, select the text box. And um, then we'll be sharing ideas. That's the way we'll share ideas today is with the annotate in the text box. Uh, besides the chat, but um, I'd like you to do that as well. All right, so what project ideas would you have for your students? So if you wanna use the annotate in your toolbar and then just pick the text and then, you know, click in the body and type your idea. And um, then we'll see what ideas you have that you might use it for your students. Cindy, Ruth is asking if they need a Google account to do activities. No, they do not need a Google account. And Caitlin, if you go look at the top of your screen um, next to the green bar, there's a button that says view options. If you click the little uh, down arrow, uh, the third one down should be annotate. Great, sorting, categorizing, creating a Venn diagram, great. Oh, yeah, this works great with a small class. Uh, see, it's kind of on top of each other. Responding to a topic in a breakout room, yeah, great. Dictation, short answer discussion, games. Great, thanks for the ideas. EL Civics. Using the pointer to highlight. Oh, and using a photo, mm-hmm. Yeah, photos are really good to insert into tables too. That's another option. All right, thank you for all your ideas. Okay, oh, great. Thank you for sharing everybody. One thing that happens with the annotation is people kind of get on top of each other, but we appreciate your ideas. Okay. All right, so, um, so far so good. Are you ready to move on? Cindy, Megan, yep. I apologize if I mispronounced your name, had a question in the chat. She was asking okay. if tables are all a part of Google Forms. Um, you mean making Google Forms? Uh, well, Google Forms is just for, you know, asking questions and gathering information. 
the table you would want to use in Google Docs. Yeah. Okay, thank you everybody for your ideas. I'm going to clear everything now. Okay. We have one more question from the chat. Um, what if you okay. want students to work on a document in breakout rooms? Do you have each room work on a different part of the document or force copy? Uh, I think I would have them have their own copy. Um, but it's up to you. You could have uh, a shared one and each one is using the same, the same document in their individual breakout rooms. But it might be easier just to each have their own and then share them with um, each group separately. All right, so what would you do? Here's some follow-up assignment ideas for writing and reading. You might wanna summarize like I, I told you before. Um, and, um, or they could compare and contrast, make sentences. If you haven't used interactive graphic organizers, here's an, an example of a Venn diagram where the students could just type in their information into the Venn diagram and submit that to you that way. Um, if you're not familiar with the whole interactive, there are lots of um, free interactive um, resources. So that might be a resource for you for, you know, mind mapping different graphic organizers. You could have a scavenger hunt. You know, who has two birds? How long has Lenny lived in San Diego, et cetera? Or you could create an interactive worksheet. Uh, for example, liveworksheets.com. You can explore that later if you'd like. You could make an online gradable assessment, you know, maybe through your LMS or through Google Classroom. But if you're not familiar with that, uh, there's something called test modes, which is very, very simple. Um, I'd like to show you a sample. Let me clear the annotations though first. Okay. Okay. I keep losing it. Here we are. Let's clear all those. All right. Uh, once you're finished annotating, if you want to close out the box, then uh, you won't be um, adding to the screen. All right. So here's a sample of test modes. So, you know, just type your name. I'll use a different name. Okay. The passcode for this is review one. So you can make a, you know, basically a basic, sorry, multiple choice, true or false, matching, and the students submit their responses and they would get the immediate feedback. And then as the teacher, you can get a little report showing you who took the test and how, how they scored, um, for example, you can sort by score. Cindy was really bad <laughs> anyway. And you can see exactly which questions they got right or wrong and how long they took. Anyway, test modes, if you don't have another, uh, you know, gradable assessment, set up, that's one you could explore, testmos.com. 
All right, so now remember your number and then we'll try one with Google Slides. So uh, we're gonna reflect and report. That would be the goal. Thank you, Barry, we'll see you next time. Yes, Carolyn, I see in the chat, you're asking about this, did the students access the test from a link? Yes, and when you create um, a quiz or review, um, it's gonna give you an exact number. And so you're gonna share that you know, URL with that number in it with your students, and then uh, they will have a code to get in. And they'll all use the same, the same code, or you name it like I named that one, review one. You know, you can give it a, a word name as, as well. Um, so it's pretty easy. The only thing is that um, everything is by a code. So if you forget the code, then you're in trouble. Um, you can sign up um, to have a paid account, but with a free account, it's more quiz by quiz, and you've got to remember that exact link and your passcode to get in. All right, so let's move on to a slide presentation. Um, so I'm going to show you first what it's going to look like. It's called our favorite place to visit in your city. And I've used this with students too. Uh, so for today, you're going to use that same number you had and find your slide in the left column here. Find your slide number. Remember, nobody was number one. So that's our example slide. So let me show you how we're going to do it. So you're going to click on your slide. And then if you click at the top of the slide, this box will open. And then move your mouse kind of to the right at the bottom where it says explore. It kind of looks like a weird plus down there. You see that? And then that's explore. So click on that. And then first you've got to think of a place you want to explore in your city, a place you like to visit. So uh, click in the search box. So maybe I'm going to pick, you know, Balboa Park. San Diego and you can see it kind of filling in here. I'm going to click that and then I need to click on images right because I want to get a picture. So whatever picture you like click on the little plus next to it and that's going to insert your picture. So grab the corner to resize it, move it, and then at the bottom, please put, you know, this is the place that you like to visit. Don't forget to include the city and also your name. All right, so everybody knows that whose slide that is. You wanna make sure your students use their name in some way. All right, so that's all you need to do. Some people might wanna put a couple pictures, but one is just fine. Um, so I'm gonna delete number two because somebody else is number two. Okay, so basically that's it. All right. I'll share it again. And I'll put it in the chat. I did share the link. Um, this is actually the link you you shared um, oh. on accident. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. OK, so go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, Patricia. <laughs> If uh, 
<clears throat> this is good for students too. If they forget what to do, then they can look at the first slide to have the directions right there again. So again, if you're if you're not participating, but you're just viewing, you can see how the um, presentation is getting populated live in real time. And that's kind of exciting to watch. And so, of course, one of the ideas is to gather so much information uh, and content that your students have generated. It's something that's, you know, important to them. And then we're getting to know them a little better. And as you're watching it develop, you can actually scroll through the slides and see what's Cindy, going on. Yes. I, I missed the part about how you search online for a picture. Oh, click Show on that top that. box and that uh, move your mouse towards the bottom of the screen and you'll see the explore button. It looks like a plus. Hold on. Ah, you see it? No, hold on. I got to go back to the slideshow. How do I get back to there from your shared screen? I'm, uh, uh, look in the chat and you can click on that link again. Okay. Okay, go back to my number. Okay. All right, the, the little, okay, explore, got it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And image, uh, do I, ju I just type in here? Okay. Yeah, in the search box, go ahead and type. And you can either click on the visual and then insert or click on the little plus by the image symbol okay. right from the list. Insert. Jody is getting fancy with her heart shape. <laughs> That's great. And you can see it gives the students a little more creativity uh, and freedom to design their slide the way they want. Share, and that looks beautiful. Shoreline Park. Oh. Caitlin likes the La Purissima Mission. That's where she got married. So, so we're learning a lot of information about people. Okay. Oh, Diana, great. Torrey Pine State Beach. <laughs> okay, you guys are doing great. Now, if you notice, um, Lola is very advanced. She knew how to change the background color of her slide. So you might teach your students about that. There's Mary Sacramento. So we have a lot of information that we're gathering. There's Megan, downtown Pleasanton. Okay, you guys are doing great. Oh, there's Alicia, Mission Trails. Mm -hmm. Sarah. 
Sacramento, the city of trees. I'm not sure whose that is. Um, so uh, often we have to remind students to put their name on their slide just to, so we know whose is whose. Yeah. Miranda, boy, okay. So now you notice when we make a slide presentation, you might have some blank slides. So no problem, when everybody's finished, you just delete those slides, uh, which is very easy. You click on it on the left and hit the delete button. So then your, your slideshow, it becomes, um, you know, a typical slideshow with no blank slides. Yes, there's a lot of talented people. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can see that you guys could spend hours doing this. Uh, good job, everybody. <laughs> and it's the same with your students. I mean, you could do this together or it could be homework so that they could spend a little more time putting more information or pictures. Um, let's see. Marianne or Marianne, you had a question about the slides. Do you mean my slides or do you mean this slideshow that we're doing? I'm not sure which one you mean. Um, while I think about it, I'll just go ahead and put my slideshow. Um, in the chat, if anyone wants to grab that now, I can do that later too, but I'll upload that file. Uh, that's my slideshow for today. Uh, and I'll put it in a, a later too, but uh, in case you wanna grab that now. All right, so thank you everybody for participating in the Google slide. Now, what are you going to do with this once you've made a slideshow? Um, so I'm sure you have ideas, but let's talk about your experience first. How was your experience? You can comment in the chat or put your microphone on or give us a reaction. Did you feel comfortable doing that? Do you think your students would enjoy doing that? Any feelings? Oh, Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa. So she said, as a level one ESL teacher, I would do this in breakout rooms. It would be too much for most students to manage independently. Both I and an aide would elicit the answers and edit from the students. Yeah, perfect. Everybody has a different situation. So great that you can figure out how it might be useful. Alicia also, great activity, though I like the idea of high tech student to help others. Yes, absolutely. You always will have some students that are more advanced than others. Great. I think it's still Yana. You'll try it with your intermediate high students. Great. I'm going to do this tonight, Lola said. Topic, favorite recipe. Oh, perfect. Oh, you guys have some great ideas. Yeah, the tricky part is setting it up. That's right, Carolyn. Um, so, but once you do one, then you get the hang of it and it gets easier every time, of course. All right, so let's move on. Now here's a sample that I did with um, <clears throat> my students. And uh, like I said, I worked with beginners. So this is just a screenshot of their slides. And um, 
and this I had done in a face-to-face -face setting. So I was able to, you know, demo for them on the big screen, but you could certainly do that remotely as well. So they each made one side of a place they like to visit in San Diego. And what we had them do then is uh, narrate uh, or read all the slides to practice speaking. So that's one thing you could do um, is to have them practice their speaking. So what are some ideas to collaborate on presentations? Well, it could be something about their native countries or cities, what they miss, how to do or make something. Uh, sometimes I've worked with uh, individual groups. You group up your students and they're gonna make, uh, you know, say six slides of how to do something, you know, how to cook rice, uh, how to plant something in the garden, something like that. Uh, maybe surprises about living in the US something about a new friend, a weekend activities, what did they do? What makes you happy or sad? Two differences in the school systems between their country and the US. You know, depending on the level of your students, you can get as basic or as complex as you like and that you're comfortable with. Um, Carolyn has another question I see. For students to create their own slides, do they start from a shared class Google account? Um, well, <clears throat> I used to have a class Google account uh, that we all shared, but then Google kind of made it a little more difficult for that to happen anymore. So it works out better if each student has their own account. And if they have Gmail, that's their Google account. So they can certainly start a slideshow. And that would be something you would have to demonstrate and model, make directions for, et cetera. So yes, they would all need to have Gmail. So some of you might teach in a situation where you're using Google Classroom uh, but if not, it makes things much, much easier if they all have uh, their own Gmail account, if you're gonna have them start their own slideshow. For my beginners, um, they did not need uh, to have their own account because I always started uh, the slideshow for them and they just participated. All right, so if you wanna use the annotate again, maybe you have some ideas that weren't mentioned. And um, if you wanna add anything here. Slide project ideas, besides the ones that I mentioned, maybe you have something, a topic that might be good Somebody mentioned the recipe one, and maybe you have some other ideas. Um, I see Laurel's question. If they go in with the link, they don't need to have an account. That's correct. Like today when you did it. Um, when you don't have an account, it just looks like anonymous, you know, when people are adding to their slide. So Google just assigns an anonymous, you know, name for them. All right, so here's some ideas showing up. Do a find someone who activity, good, interview a partner and make a slideshow about that partner, perfect. Students can work collaboratively in breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. Yes. The teacher could provide that, that's true. Family members. <laughs> yeah, share issues with tech while kids are also on Zoom. Yeah, perfect. 
All right. Everybody, you know, you just think about your situation and how you would like to, uh, you know, make it work for them. This is not working. The most important thing is to, you know, experiment and try something simple first and go from there. Um, let's see, here's another question from Marianne. How about copyrights for copy and pasting the pics from the website? Well, the, the images that you used right in Google Slides, those are allowed because they're coming from uh, Google themselves. So those are all safe to use. If you're going to the website, uh, or just the general, you know, google.com to search for images. You want to be careful, make sure they're allowed for um, use, you know, beyond um, copy. You know, the copyright laws are, you know, more stricter these days. So you, you might want to go to sites like Pixabay or Unsplash. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. I like that too, Pixabay. I use those in my slide presentation. No um, attribution is required, pixabay.com, for example. Some people like Unsplash, or you can actually sort in Google under images and find, find uh, resources that are allowed for modification or use um, without recognition. Uh, Marianne, maybe you could change your chat because your uh, comments are only going to me. Maybe you could change it to everyone so everyone could see your, your nice comments and questions. Lola, Maybe you can explain that meaning of your name, origin. Origin, <laughs> sorry. sorry. I have uh, my students, I have them like pull up the meaning of their name, um, the origin, where did their name come from? I'll have them have like a, a link to Google Maps so people can open up the link, um, the characteristics of the name. And do you live up to those characteristics? Oh, so that's very interesting because your name, you know, kind of represents you. But do you actually know the meaning of your name? Do you know where it came from? And so it's very interesting <laughs> for the students to find out this information that they do love to share it. OK, great. That's a good idea. <clears throat> All right, so let's move on. We have a couple more um, activities to try and do. Now, the next one is with Google Photos or Google Albums. And with that one, you do need a Google account to participate in that one. We don't need the numbers anymore. Um, <clears throat> Oh, but I forgot to share some follow-up assignment ideas, maybe for speaking or listening. That last one, oral questioning, uh, you know, I've already, we've already talked about that. You share your screen and you ask some comprehension check questions or you ask for further information. Uh, you could also have the students narrate, you know, they could use their phone recorder Google Voice, if you have a Google Voice phone with your class, you could use Vocaroo, which you can instantly make a recording and upload it. You can have students interview each other to get more information. You know, I see your slide. What are two things you like about Balboa Park? Do you go alone or with other people? You know, you might have a list of questions or they develop their own questions and then they report back in some way. There are, of course, many things to do. 
but maybe the easiest one is the you know recording on their phone so easy um i don't know that we'll have time for this but if you use the auto recorder on your phone to read a few slides you could summarize um and share with me if you wanted but i don't think we'll have time for that i did um one just a sample one Maybe you can hear. Places to visit in San Diego. Ha likes to visit Balboa Park. Kai likes to visit SeaWorld. And Fabrizio likes to visit the USS Midway. Okay, so there's just an example of um, how students could share with you. You know, that was me doing a sample, but... Uh, very easy. They can just record on their phone. They could read all of the slides, just their own slide, five slides, whatever you want them to do, and then send it to you. Or if you have an LMS, they could, uh, you know, there's probably a way they could post their audio so that you could give them feedback on their speaking. You can, you know, again, develop some um, ideas for further lessons that need to be created to help them with their uh, speaking abilities. But that's, you know, an easy one to do for a follow-up. All right. So I already showed you this before, but this is in the slideshow about sharing as an editor for docs and slides so that everyone can add their information. Um, you can also do the viewer or commenter if you wanted to use those options. Now with Google Photos, we're, we're going to do right now, you need to have a, a Google account. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to share an album with you and you're going to select this um, little image with a plus on it, which means you want to add a photo. And so you can do that. Uh, and then a, a follow up would be to comment on someone else's picture. So you to do that, you click on the picture of your choice and then type in the comment box. And you could have your students just comment or you could have them ask a question. Oh, where is this? And what plan is that? Or, you know, whatever it is, have them use their questioning to um, add that. So here it is. Here's the album that I'm going to share with you. And there's just one picture right now that I've posted. And you can see at the top, there's the um, plus photo up there to add a photo. Now, uh, for this activity, I'll grab this and put it in the chat. But it could be that, you know, most of your students have their uh, photos. Where are they? Well, a lot of them, it's on their phone. So I did make a QR code if you wanted to grab that with your phone, if your phone is handy. Um, so you could try it that way by adding a photo in that way. Again, you'll probably have to sign in with your Google account. So if you don't recall that information, um, it would be harder to participate. So either grab the QR code with your phone or, you know, add a picture from your computer. So the topic is, you know, something you like to do in your free time a hobby you have. Like here's a picture of our pineapples that we were growing uh, a couple months ago. So good, we're already getting some photos coming in. And you can see also on the photo the name of the person that uh, posted and that's because you had to use your Google account.
So if I see Elizabeth and I click on hers, That looks like oregano, maybe. I'm not sure. All right, great. Here's some more coming in. Mary, Jody, great. Great. And there's Miranda. She likes to take a walk. Looks like Jody does some mosaic or of some sort. Mary also likes hiking. Yeah, with the photos, it helps to keep refreshing and then more will come up. Great. There's Diana's um, tomatoes, maybe? I'm not sure. Those look good. Alyssa's in the snow with her family. Oh, how fun. There's Megan at the beach. Clara is making a special bumblebee craft. Ruth uh, traveling somewhere. Okay. So you can see how you're gathering a picture. Oh, Elizabeth said that's uh, Marjoram. Oh, the comment wasn't showing up. Let's see. Yeah, I don't see the comment either. Now, let me check on my phone. Carolyn said it's at the um, on the bottom right hand corner. Oh, okay, there it is. Um, also, if you have it on your phone, you could probably see it a little differently on your phone. Yes, I can see the comments now. Oh, there's a butterfly. Oh, here's a department meeting from Lolita. Oh, great. Okay, so you can see you can gather lots of pictures. And then, you know, you can have your students ask questions of each other. If you share this with your class, you know, if you're in a Zoom meeting, you can have someone talk more about their picture. And, um, you know, generate some more conversation and the idea, of course, is just to get to know someone, get to know everybody a little more about their life. All right, so thank you, participants, with that one. All right, so let's move on to the last activity.
which is Oh, first of all, how was your experience? Did you like the photos one? It's so um, wonderful to see photos, you know, instead of just text all the time. Um, so I really like that one. Did you feel comfortable doing that one? You can see that for the students to fu fully participate, they would need uh, a Google account. So that could be a drawback if they don't all have that. Good, okay, engaging. Uh, so Ruth had some a question about explaining using the QR code. Well, the QR code just allows you to use a mobile device <clears throat> to read it, you know, through the camera on your phone. So because so many uh, people have tons of photos on their phones, usually that's where we would find the photos. So I like to use the QR code so that, you know, it's easier for the students to um, add their photos if you have the QR code and then they can get right to the album from their phone and easily add their own pictures. So it's just for ease of use and where the photos are located. Uh, so there are QR code generators that you can download onto your phone. They're free. I just have a free one I downloaded and I use that, or you can actually do it on your computer as well. Um, so great. Um, I'm seeing lots of good comments. Okay. All right, thank you for the comments, everybody. All right, so let's move on. Um, in the slideshow, um, make sure you review this for how to share. You wanna make sure in the album that you have all the collaborate and link sharing activated so that people can see and add to the album. So those are just the directions for that. Some ideas for albums you might want to make. Um, favorite food, favorite room in the house, you know, two or three items with the favorite color in the same photo. You know, you can have your students take photos. Um, nature, you know, a favorite pair of shoes or um, a, some treasured item, maybe from their country, a family member's hand. Um, I've also tried this one, it's popular, a very close up photo and then students guess what it is. You know, so they comment on each of the items. Uh, I see Stelliana says, can you please show us how to generate the QR code? Well, um, I downloaded a QR code generator, they're called onto my phone and then I um, use that, you know, basically you have your photo album and you have the URL of the photo album. So you just insert that in the QR generator and then it makes a code for you. And since I did it on my phone, then I uploaded the code to Google Drive, you know, you can share it in some way. So I uploaded it to Google Drive and then I could put it into my slide presentation. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, so let's do the last one while we have a few minutes left and that's the Jamboard project. 
So we're going to share about a favorite holiday. So again, I'll put it in the chat. I'll show you first. It looks like this. Now, I wasn't sure where the participants would be from. So in Jamboard, you can make different frames. It's just like a, di a digital bulletin board of some sort. But at the top here, you see where it says one of eight. So if you click the arrow, you're going to get to the other frames that I set up. So this would be good for your students. You want to maybe have a few frames so that not all of the students are on the same frame because it'll get pretty crowded. You could have it by groups, group one, group two, group three, etc. Or I've divided this for you guys by area. So we've got Northern California on the first one then Central California, then Southern California, maybe a Western US, not in California. I'm not sure if anybody's not from California. Central US, Eastern US, you know, outside the US. Um, when I set this up, we weren't sure where everybody would be from. But I think probably most of you are from California. So you'll be using the first three slides. So basically a favorite holiday and why. So I'll go to Southern California since that's where I'm right now. And on the left, you see some tools. The pen is very difficult to use. It's just like writing. So I recommend the sticky note. So the fourth one down is a sticky note. So if you click on that, you can choose your color. Um, color choice. So, okay, maybe I'll pick the green. And what's your favorite holiday? So, oh, maybe New Year's. And why? Oh, um, I love the hats. Okay, whatever you want to put. And then you click save. And cancel it. And you can move it around where you like so they're not on top of each other. All right, does that make sense? So that's all you have to do. And um, I will share this with you. You do not need an account. You'll just be able to get to the Jamboard and start uh, typing. Okay, go to the frame. Um, of your choice and um, add some information. And you can also notice that anybody can move any of the boxes around. So like I could move this one, you know, if they're on top of each other, you know, you might want to move them around. Cindy? Yes. I, I keep clicking on the link and then when I go to add something, it goes to the main, your, your shared screen. I can't get back to my, my version that I can enter something in. How do I do that? Let's see. <clears throat> I click on the link uh -huh. and it pops up. And then when I go to enter something, 
Did you click on a sticky note on okay. the left or something else? All right, now it's working. I'm sorry, oh, I've done good. it four times and it didn't, okay. Okay, practice makes perfect. Okay, now you can see, depending on the um, level of your students, like here's an example, Central California with a uh, very uh, lengthy explanation, which is great. You know, all your, your level of students are different. Yeah. I don't think anybody's not from California. Oh, Eastern US, who is that? Christmas. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's me, Clara. Oh, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. Oh, welcome, welcome. Thanks. Nice, nice to have you. Nice to be here, thank you. Hi, Pittsburgh. I used to live in Pittsburgh. <laughs> nice. Okay, so again, instant population. Oh, look, we even got a pictures. Yeah, if you're adept with a pen, you can really make some nice pictures. You guys are so good, much better than I am. Oh, somebody likes President's Day, uh-huh. So one thing you could do with your students then with this activity is, um, because it's anonymous, have them guess, oh, who do you think likes Halloween? <clears throat> and who do you think likes uh, Easter? Or, you know, if you want to, you have them put their name on it and then you can ask them more questions. Uh, or, you know, you could compile the information in some way. Oh, how many students said they liked Christmas? How many students said they liked Thanksgiving? Or if each frame was for a different group, it could be, you know, some other activity that you want them to write about, <coughs> write about or um, explain in some way. Um, you can also have them add a, a picture, um, an image of themselves. Here's an example here. You can have them take a picture of themselves right from their, um, you know, camera on their device and add it to the, the Jamboard. Anyway, there's, a ton of possibilities, of course. All right, so thank you all for participating. We had one student from Central California. Who is that from Central California? Can you identify yourself? Very secretive. Okay, we're not sure who that is, but that's okay. All right, thank you guys. Look, you're coloring, we're adding images. All right, so great. You can see how this is kind of fun um, to make a jam board. And it's nice how they can just post and you move them around. And uh, it's a different way to display information. All right, so we've got to move on and finish up here. Um, how was your experience? Do you think that you might want to try that with your students? You know, any of these uh, activities besides the photos, the docs, the slides, and the Jamboard, you can access through your Google Drive account, which I recommend just using the Google Drive. Cindy, we have five minutes left. Okay, thank you very much. Let me put the file back up in case anybody didn't grab it. Um, all right, so let's just finish up. I do have some general pointers 
you can look at this later too, but make sure you're modeling, 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 you know, you could do the live demo, you could make directions, you could do a video, try and create meaningful follow-up activities, clear expectations. Remember, you can share files by student email rather than the links if you're more comfortable with that. If you're going synchronous, you want to refresh. Um, after you make your document or slide presentation, you might want to change that so that no one else can edit if you're going back to use the form again, or you can make it into a PDF and download it for your students. Uh, like I said, I like to use the Google Drive account. Uh, photos, you go to photos.google.com. Uh, also in the albums, you could have students share video. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, pictures. Students can download any photo. The free apps you can download. Uh, think about other Google programs like Sheets or Maps. And of course, have fun learning about each other. So things for you to think about, would you plan a project for your class? You know, think about which apps, would you try it synchronously or asynchronously? Maybe you wanna try it for homework to start with, or, you know, try it live like we did. It's kind of fun to do it that way because you get instant information and you can talk to your students about it. They can talk to each other. So thank you all for coming. Are there any final questions or comments?